What's poppin' gamers? It is me, Leon, with a brand new 7 Quick Tips video. Just like last week, we're gonna be skipping the themed videos and talking about an important building technique. That's right, we're gonna be talking about another insanely important Minecraft building technique to make your builds much, much, much better. You already know what it is, it's texturization. The art of combining textures in such a way to make your builds full of detail and pleasing to the eye. Consider this a sequel to my video on depth, which I put out last week. If you haven't seen that, then it would be a great idea to watch through that before starting our discussion on texturization. With that out of the way, let's cut the chit chat and dive right into 7 quick tips for texturizing your Minecraft builds. 1. Define a main block palette before you start your build. One of the best ways to make an amazing Minecraft build is to plan out your block palette. It doesn't need to be anything crazy, just visualize the completed build in your mind, think about what colors and details it has, and then do your best to express those ideas in the form of Minecraft blocks. Then all you really gotta do is pop on over to a creative world and start laying down block combos until you find something you really love. Here I've got an idea that might help you out. I'm gonna go through some old footage of my favorite builds that I've made in the 7 Quick Tips series, and for each one, I'm gonna show off the main block palette that I used. Keep in mind that these block palettes don't actually have every single block, especially not the detail blocks, but they generally encompass the main textures and colors that make up the build. Remember this airship? A lot of you guys really love the airship. Here's its block palette. I absolutely adore this cute little cottage core house. And while I used a ton of different textures in it, here are the most common ones. Here's a recent one, my Wild West Saloon from a couple weeks ago. Check out all the different wood types that I used. Last up, we're gonna go all the way back to my Desert Pyramids video. You'd be surprised how many colors I used in the interior of this pyramid. It's a heck of a lot more than just sandstone. Two, figure out some ways to match blocks in your palette that you enjoy. Okay, so you've got a set of textures laid out, but they don't always look good all jumbled up next to one another. Here's an example I'm sure you guys have seen before and you didn't even know. Wood and stripped wood are very useful building blocks, but most people don't arrange their wood like this. The texture just doesn't connect well and it overall just gives off a bad vibe. Taking this same concept, let's apply it to one of my favorite block palettes. You've seen me use this a million times before, it's the classic brick palette with terracotta, granite, and of course, bricks. Whenever I use this block combo, I always try and make sure the bricks and the polished granite pieces are adjacent to each other, kinda like Tetris pieces. I avoid having diagonal segments like this because to me, it just doesn't feel right. 3. Use messier textures less often and cleaner textures more often. What do I mean by messy and clean? Let's take a look at an example. Here's white concrete. This block is literally just one color. That's it. There's no grooves, lines, shading, nothing. This block is very clean and you can tell because it's really easy to look at a huge wall of it. This isn't visually offensive at all. Now let's go to the polar opposite and look at lime glazed terracotta. This block is wacky and wild and I love it, but anyone who builds a whole house out of these probably needs therapy. When you're experimenting with a bunch of different textures, keep in mind that messy blocks are best used in smaller quantities. However, this means that you can just spam a whole bunch of cleaner blocks like concrete, terracotta, stone, stripped wood, sandstone, and others and not really have any problems. It's a really important balance to be able to pull off in your build. 4. Build in veins and segments. Don't actually randomize your block placements. You probably hear about how you should randomize your textures to create these cool gradients, and yeah, that's better than just using huge boring walls of one kind of block, but it's still not that great. All of the best Minecraft builders don't just place down blocks randomly. They actually put a lot of thought and methodology into where they put their textures. Some of the best advice I've ever heard is to keep your textures in clumps or veins as opposed to doing 
using true randomization. On top of that, consider adding a kind of gradient. Maybe add in more of one kind of block at the bottom and more of another kind of block at the top. We're actually going to talk a lot more about this in next week's 7 Quake Tips video on adding color into your builds, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Check out this stone wall I've made with tough, cobble, andesite, stone, and light gray concrete powder. This was done randomly. I literally just spun my mouse wheel and clicked. And it doesn't look that great. Now here is the same textures and the same size wall, but this time I put more thought into where the blocks went. You can see a bit of a gradient going from the darker tough and cobble up to the lighter andesite and concrete powder. This looks a million times better. 5. Establish rules for your palette. Building off of the last few tips, you can make a set of rules for your build to follow that will really make it seem more thought out and consistent. Maybe you want to follow something like tough has to be mixed in with bits of cobblestone, or moss has to be surrounded by some mossy cobble. Create these guidelines in your mind and your build will seem a lot less random. You could write these down if you want, but I don't really think you need to. As long as you stay consistent and stick to your ideas throughout the whole build, then you'll be more satisfied with the end result and anyone who sees your build will be more impressed by its design. This is one of the easiest tricks to implement when you're texturing a build and it gives you a huge amount of reward, so you really gotta try this out. 6. Understand what kind of scale you're building at. Your Minecraft build can range anywhere from a few blocks tall to a gargantuan structure stretching all the way to the build limit. As you can imagine, this definitely affects your texture choices. When you're building at a small scale, you don't have as much room to work with many different kinds of textures. Individual blocks are a lot more noticeable, so when you're viewing this build from close up, you'll be able to make out specific details. This can be a good thing though, if you're trying to make a detailed build, you're going to have a much easier time working on a smaller scale. Large scale builds on the other hand have got to be viewed from far away, and this has some big advantages. Instead of having to use small decor pieces for detail, you can use entire blocks, and those blocks won't stand out much compared to the other ones, so you can really go wild with the textures that you use. One of my favorite examples of this is dead coral. Up close, it looks pretty nasty and weird. I wouldn't put this in a small house. You would see it and wonder why I'm, you know, building a house out of dead coral, but from a large distance, it's an amazing amazing texture. The individual details and coralness goes away, and what you're left with is a really dope gray texture that can be a great intermediate block between a darker texture like tough and a lighter one like andesite. 7. With your block choices, strike a balance between survival friendly and creativity. There are so many blocks in Minecraft, and even more block combinations. Despite that, there are certain texture combos that everyone has seen. Everyone and their cat has seen oak wood and oak logs, spruce wood and spruce logs, stone bricks and oak, andesite and stone, and many other generic common block palettes. Now, these are common for a reason. They're all very easy to get large amounts of in survival. In fact, just by playing through the game like a normal person, you're basically guaranteed to get tons of these items. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to make the most creative, the most mind-blowing, and the most inspiring builds, you're gonna need to think more outside the box. Here are a handful of blocks that in my opinion are criminally underrated when it comes to uses in building and decorations. And you know what? It wouldn't be a 7 Quick Tips video without a shameless plug. I've actually made build hacks videos on each of these blocks that I just showed you. Links to all them are in the description or you can just search them up on my channel. Thanks gamers! Alrighty fellas, I really hope all you wonderful people out there enjoyed the 7 Quick Tips video. If you're still here, thank you for watching to the end, because I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video and hit that subscribe button so I get even more of that delicious YouTube clout. Until next time my dudes, have a wonderful day and check back next week for more 7 Quick Tips. Peace.